this is what you're getting. Box full of equipment and it comes with a sun visor. You get the controller which is there and you get the TV monitor with the receiver which is up here and the receiver the RC305 or 308 I think it is on there and this is the Blackhawk uh, by FPV Horizon antennas and basically put this up then you put it on a tripod tripod will not be included as part of the deal but I mean anyone can get hold of a tripod it's not a big deal so you pop him on there and I'll just put the tripod up so once he's up on a tripod it'll look something like this and you power it with a battery which is attached onto the velcro on the side and then just attached onto the plug connector like so so as you can see we've got a little hood a hoodie on here and this hood then gives you a much better much better um, idea of what's going on on the screen so that protects your your vision so tripod like this it should come up to about head height as you can see here about head height for me on the copter we've actually got a separate power supply here battery going to the gimbal down here which has got a GoPro Hero 3 it'll take a Hero 3 or Hero 4 without modification and this little lens on here is just to darken it down because we get the slower shutter speeds which are preferable so we then have the power which goes on to this connector and we have a buzzer here which I have tape on makes a hell of a noise but that's just in case you're operating over trees or crop so that you if you did came, come down which is you know something you don't really want to do it'll enable you to be able to audibly locate where your drone is done it many times have um, uh, come down in crop and it can take hours to find the drone with this it'll take seconds so if you put the buzzer on and the gimbal on it'll also power up the transmitter and the transmitter is on the back it's a Boscam Boscam transmitter which means it has the Boscam frequencies and this here is the Horizon FPV um, I can't remember the name of this now, it's a uh, Nimrod, that's right, Nimrod 5.8 um, circular polarised antenna and there's a circular polarised uh, high powered receiver on the other end. But when you turn this on then that will transmit, so let's power it up. So let's just push the power things together, you'll get the noise and if you do not touch as long as it's on a flat surface, if you do not touch the gimbal within a few seconds, it'll initialize like that. Now it's ready to go. If you do not have a flat surface and it's vibrating, the gimbal will not initialize. It has to be completely flat and still. And we turn the GoPro on, which we do by holding the button in for a few seconds. There it comes. And with that on, we then receive our image. So there we are with me putting my leg, my foot, waving my foot back and forth in front of the screen. So these are the carbon fibre ones and what you need to do is you need to insert a screwdriver in here and twist whilst holding the base until these are actually until these are actually tight because at the moment they're undone so we'll do them up all round you must do them tight and then grip this make sure there's absolutely no play at all and uh, then you should be set to go flying obviously check the correct propellers are on the correct parts 
Um, here we have a sticker which says CW, which means clockwise. Then we have CCW, which means counterclockwise. So of course this one then is clockwise, then anti, then clock, then anti, then clock, and then anti. So that's the propeller order. So obviously clockwise would mean the facing blade would be going round. So let's put them all on. So now you've got all the propellers on. You check by holding the propeller under your palm and trying to spin the motor underneath. And if you can't spin the motor, then they're tight. If you can spin the motor at all underneath, they're not tight. So go back round, try it again. With the batteries, which um, are going to be included, uh, we'd have a, a set of batteries which are put together as one pack. So this is 2.6 milliamp hours. It's a 4S battery and we run them in parallel to increase the amps and to increase the C rating. The rating per battery here is 30, degree, uh, 30 C. So if we add them together, that's 30, 60, 90 C. That if we if we run them as parallel, we'll get 90 C. So basically what we do is we connect these together through a multi-joiner and then it comes out to one end and the one end goes in the power connector there. So there's four potential, but we only use three. So we use three in onto one. Now we fit the, the battery onto the top via Velcro straps and the Velcro straps come off like this. The battery then goes on, there's a Velcro strap on this. So we pop that down and then we pull the Velcro straps over the top. So now the battery is connected, the straps are pulled down tight and you can see there's a bit of tension in all the straps there. One other thing to do is make sure that this is facing forwards. If it's not facing forwards, the copter will gyrate as it detects an in inaccuracy between the compass heading, because this is a compass. So we've got to make sure it's lined up to the front of the copter. And this is the GPS as well. And it's raised up so that it's not near any of the other electrical stuff on the, uh, on the board. But if this was off to one side, you'd have a, a hunting clockwise, and if it was that side, you'd have a hunting anti-clockwise in the air. So you keep that forward, and then we can power up by connecting this power lead to this here, and then we'll hear the power up noise. We've got our transmitter is underneath, and these are the antennas here. And what we have to do is we have to put the arms into position which we do there, but we cannot rely on those just holding themselves in place. So we have these straps, and these straps go around from there to there to hold these together so that they will not flex, because if you were to do high-powered manoeuvre turns, the torque in this arm would cause the arm to come around. Of course, then the propeller would hit the other propeller or the boom, and it would just smash and you'd have a bit of a problem. So what we do is we bring these all into position. So we bring those into position and that one into position there. And then we take off these ties, connect them up. And believe it or not, the manufacturer does, doesn't even tell you that you'll need to do this, but it, it seems pretty obvious uh, if you have these arms coming back on themselves that you need to do this. So we'll put this round. So these are a quick release type of, uh, quick release type of, um, cable tie. So you just tighten them up and then you can see that the arms will not will not any longer go round. They're stuck in position. So we do that and I double double do it, which is why you see I've got two, just to be absolutely certain because this is critical. So I put two safety cable ties. Oh, there we are, that's um, tanks on the Salisbury plane. Um, and then we put two on the other side. Now, on the second one, on the back, we just tie off the battery cables so that the battery connector is down underneath and when it's connected it will swing around down here. It's very unlikely it'll make its way up into the 
into the blades but what can reach the blades are the balance leads so what we do is we spin them round a couple of times and just push them in through through there you may wish to attach something to to fix that but then it makes sure that these don't fly around in this area so that they can't reach the blades but with this tied onto the second outer safety connector which is slightly looser than the inner one the inner one is tight this one is a little bit less tight as we don't want to cut the battery cables here but it's a safety feature so if the first one goes it will hit the second one and the second one will only have a certain amount of play so it will hold it together enough to keep it safe and you can see the distance from the blades here is is quite wide so you know you've got a bit of play there and on this side we've got the safety cables and what we see is that they're facing down and even if the blade is in position with if this flipped up because of the air you can see there's not enough space for it to get there so they can flap around a little bit but they're not going to hit just make sure nothing's going to impact any of the propellers so last minute checks we just make sure that the batteries on we make sure that the antenna is pointed in the direction that we're going to be flying as the straight line is needed to be lined up so we do that and we just power up the drone which we'll do now face the drone in the direction that you're going to be flying so you can see the flashing light power up the gimbal should then see an image and the gimbal will correct itself which it does so we have a video image drone is just acquiring GPS power up the power up the remote unit which you can see there tells us the battery of the remote unit and then if we hold down we go into the screen which tells us the status of the onboard battery which is uh, currently 16.8 which is pretty much fully charged that's there this is the transmitter receive and transmit power so that tells you when your signal is getting low and this is the amps being used which so is using 1.3 amps okay when we raise the this stick here the timer will start and we've got an eight minute timer set so it'll beep us when we get down low but the timer starts there this one counts down Make sure the switch position is in GPS, otherwise the copter will drift and make sure this switch is off for the moment and then into that position once we get flying. So pretty much ready to go. So just waiting to see the, the flashing on the, the drone down there stop, which will tell us that we're ready to go when it's acquired enough satellites. So that is... Uh, can't see it very well so there we are that's pretty much what we need to see for a takeoff how uh, we should be able to see if I operate this control here you will see over there let's just get this repositioned If I operate this control here, you'll see that it operates the, the camera gimbal and when I get to the central position, it beeps. So if I go past the central position, I don't get anything, come back to center, that's beep. And if I switch into this position, then it's slow roll by itself, faster roll, very fast, stop when it beeps, go back the other way, roll slow, roll faster, stop when it beeps, roll faster, stop when it beeps, roll down, stop when it beeps. We've got a confirmation by the flashing on there that it's receiving its, um, receiving its GPS signals. So we perform the CSC command which is down, middle and in. And then we should be ready to go. So let's perform that command again so there with the drone so you perf perform the CSC command and then this is the 
So let's power it up and see what happens. There you see, perfect takeoff. So we just let it hover for a second. Okay. Now it's it's GPS locked at the moment, so if I take the GPS lock off, you will see it drift with the wind, which is doing. So if I put the GPS lock back on, it will then hover and will not move with the wind. So let me take it back out into a frontal position, take it up a bit higher. Okay, uh, left movement, right movement, left movement, right movement. Okay, we can perform. Backwards. Let's go up a little bit higher. So we've got forwards, backwards. Okay, I'll go up the front of the camera and perform some proper maneuvers. You can see it's using about. You can see it's using about 38 amps there. It's down to about 14.7 on the battery there. Can't go below 13.4, I think it is safely. You can see it's quite quiet as long as it's not right on top of you. It's quite a quiet drone because it's got so many blades in there, high push drops. So if I put it into the lock mode now, then it means that I can turn the drone and fly away while spinning because it's now in headlock mode so I can keep spinning whilst coming forwards or backwards I can keep spinning the drone whilst flying directly towards me as it's in headlock mode so it doesn't matter which way the which way the head of the, the drone is facing if the head is facing to the right as you can see the camera is facing that way it'll go away from me if I face it forwards, it will still go away from me. If I go to the left again, it will still go away from me. Okay, so... Now I've got it on fast controls at the moment. If I put it onto slow controls, and the left and right turn, is now I can push the stick all the way around and it will perform a very mild turn in, in that position. Whereas if I put it in the fast mode, it'll perform very fast turns, but it could become unstable if you're not careful. So that's doing fast turns. If I stop it, and I put it in the slow mode, and I can go all the way, and it will just do slow turns. So this is much better for cinematography. Either way, it can just do slow turns in that mode. But when you're coming into the land, put it back on fast so you've got full control. So. so, if you want to come home, you've got the home lock mode, and the home lock mode, will, wherever you are, so I take it out of the field, a long way away, and I take it over to one side, and, and I turn it, I turn the copter, so it's facing that way, so it's 90 degrees facing that way. If I push the home lock button and pull back towards me, no matter where I am, the copter will come directly towards me. So you can see it coming directly towards me now, until it gets to within about 10 meters, then it stops. So there we are. So, I turn the home lock mode off. in stable position okay and if you want to fly first person view so you want to fly through the looking there you just turn it into the off position uh, and then you can fly first person view so whichever way you see you fly forwards if you push forwards so if i turn 90 degrees to the left if i push forwards now i will go to the left you see because i'm pushing forward but the nose is to the left so it go first person view if i turn it into lock position 
and it flies away from me when I'm in that position. So there we are. So I've got about two minutes of battery time left. So 14.1 there. And always watching out that when your battery is lower, you can't you can't do big thrusts anymore because it'll run out of power. But if I if I if I accelerate up, you'll see it goes from 30 39 up to about 67. So there we are. It warns me if a battery gets too low. So if I push it too hard, push the acceleration or the throttle too hard, it'll warn me that the battery level has dipped down. But with new batteries, it won't dip down quite so much. But there we go. Let's bring it in for a landing. I've got one minute 22 left. So let's put it in normal mode. So there's no headlock on. Bring it back to us. And try and do a gentle landing. We always have the back facing us. And just bring it down, bring it close to the ground. Just make sure it's not moving. And just try and drop it down. And if the stick's in the lowest position, it'll automatically turn itself off. Or um, you shouldn't really, you shouldn't really do the CSC command. You never do the CSC command when you're trying to land. You just push the stick all the way to the bottom and leave it. If you were to do the CSC command to try and stop it, you'd flip the copter over. So that's not a good thing. So disconnect the power. Disconnect from there. And we got an error, an error message on this then saying that we'd lost the signal. No data. So it's warning us that we've lost the signal with the copter. If it loses the signal when it's flying, it will return to home. And if you hold this button here for five seconds... If you hold the button for five seconds, it will enter return to home mode. OK. So, there we are. That's the beeping telling us that we've now run out of time. So now we're running out of time. So we're... Basically, we should have been on the ground by now. So that's the warning saying your time is up. Turn him off, and that's a little bit of flying. I'll just do a little bit of footage of us taking it apart just to show you how easy it is. We've taken the battery off, we undo the straps, the battery comes off there, and we undo the safety strap here, then the battery is free. Then we take the safety strap off, put it on one of the arms, put the Velcro over the top so that it doesn't disappear. So that's the Velcro done. So we take the second safety strap off and we put it on one of the arms. These arms are now free to fold up. There we are. These arms are now free to fold up as well. Put the safety straps on the arm so we don't lose them. And we fold that up. And now the drone is ready for transport. Simple as that. If you like these videos and you'd like to help sponsor us, please go to our Patreon site. Details are in the box below.